right. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Uh, here we are back at the studio. Little vinyasa flow over the noon hour. This is a new 45-minute um, offering I'm doing uh, in the noon slot. So hopefully you got the memo. Uh, we're not doing the 10 a.m. anymore. It's a little, a little too hard to live stream and teach a real class at the same time. So um, I decided to give you guys your own special noon hour class. Hopefully we'll get a little bit better reception today than we did on Monday. I'm hoping that our internet issues are working themselves out. Aside from that, uh, here we go. I don't want to take up too much more time, so I'll just get us moving and flowing here as soon as possible. Uh, we're going to do a lot of work for the spine today. So lots of spinal flexion, lots of moving forward and backward. You'll see um, a few rounds of some moon salutation, uh, chandra namaskara, if you've never done a moon salute before. You're gonna love it, they're fun, and um, often just make you feel really open and free. So uh, by the time we're done, we should feel a little bit longer, a little bit taller, a little bit energized. We'll see um, what else comes our way as we get moving, but we're gonna start this practice in child's pose. So when you're ready, come on back. Take the knees nice and wide and stretch your hands out in front and then just sink your weight back onto your heels and relax your forehead, relax your cheekbones, relax your jaw. Take a moment to just simply loosen up the back of your neck. Let your forehead rock gently side to side. And then settle into stillness and take about five slow deep breaths. Just start to draw your awareness inward. Start to notice the sound and the feel of your breath change. Give it a little bit more texture, a little bit more sound. And a little bit more depth you start breathing past your lungs and down into your belly. So much of our day is spent just taking these really shallow breaths that stay up in the lungs, just kind of recycling the same inhale and exhale over and over again. So this is your opportunity to really do a full breath exchange. Deep inhale and then get every last ounce that old, stale exhale out. Let it go. Make some space in your body for new breath. One more time. Exhale completely. Good. Next deep breath in. I'm just going to lift up, slide one arm underneath you. Doesn't matter which one. Scoop it right underneath. Relax onto that shoulder. And then left hand can just keep reaching, or whichever your free hand is in this case, can just reach forward a little bit further until you open up the space in your mid-back, thoracic spine, right between your shoulder blades. You're putting a little pressure on that arm underneath of you here. Find a stretch right along your biceps and tricep. Wrapping around into the outer shoulder there as well. And draw all the muscles behind and below your belly button up and in. And start to bring your bumpers to life. And then as you slide that free hand forward, release and switch. Take it through threaded needle in a child's pose here. So we're still keeping the hips back heavy toward the heels. Relax your ear, your jaw, your cheekbones.
notice how your body relaxes just a little more with each breath out. And when you're ready, release, unwind, stretch both hands out in front, and one final exhale here, and then we'll shift some weight up, find your way to hands and knees, crawling up through tabletop pose, and start to move your spine forward and back through some cats and cows, so just rounding out on the exhale, push the ground away. Let your belly drop, inhale, tilt your tail, lift your chin, breathe in. And again, exhale, round out. And let your eyes close and just start to feel that natural connection to the breath. How the body always wants to open up, extend, lengthen on breaths in. And on the exhale is when we're contracting, rounding, folding. Twisting. Come back through center, tuck your toes here, and lift the hips up, take it back to your first downward facing dog. Don't mind me, I'm practicing right next to the radiators and they just kicked on, so if you hear a little rumbling in the background, it'll be over with soon. Move the hips forward and back slightly a few times. Kind of almost shifting a little bit toward a plank and back, and then pedal through the feet, swivel through the heels. Shake out the shoulders, the head, the neck, any place where you feel like you're still holding a little bit of tension. Gaze forward, walk your feet just a few steps, not all the way to the top of the mat, but maybe right to the middle of the mat, and then just drop down into a little crouching curl like this. Set your knees down on the ground for a second, and you're gonna keep all of your toes tucked. So, just a little toe crunching here. And once you're completely tucked under, and sometimes you have to reach back and help your little toes that don't wanna go on their own. Once you're back, sit on your heels as much as you can, and you're gonna feel a pretty big stretch there, right underneath the webbings of the toes, across the top bridge of the foot. And we're not gonna be here forever, just enough to warm up the feet a little bit, and feel some tingling in your toes. That sensation makes its way all the way through your feet to your ankles. And then when you're ready, release your hands down, send your hips up, and finish that walk to the top of the mat. When you get there, hang heavy upside down any forward fold that feels good to you. You want to get your shoulders involved. You can bring your hands behind your back, lock them up. Open up your chest here. Release, relax, and rise slowly. Stack your body as you come on up. Take the shoulders back and down a few times. Two flat feet on the mat and the palms to press. Samastiti. Just an equal standing pose here. A moment to set an intention for your practice for your day. And then hands at your side. All right, we're going to move through three times Chandra Namaskara, so moving through a moon salutation. And when you're ready, we'll start slowly the first time through. Bring your arms up and over. You're going to grab your left wrist. Just pull gently to the right. Push your hips out to the side. Stretch down the left side of your body. Good. Try not to turn your chest, your hips, or your torso, but just push out the side. Good. Back through center. Take it the other way around. Inner thighs squeeze together. Straight up the middle on your inhale, lift your gaze. 
and exhale, dive down over the legs, forward fold. Half lift and lengthen. Now, if you're not familiar with moon salute, this is where everything starts to change, right here. You're gonna crouch and curl, get low, squeeze everything in, bring your forehead towards your knees, and hold. This little crouch and curl position. You come a little higher up on your tiptoes, get your heels right underneath your sits bones. That's two and one. Lift your gaze and plant your hands. Left foot is the only foot that you're ever going to step with. Left side of the body is the moon side, so hence the left leg's always going to lead us. Left foot goes back, and then you'll end up in a nice low lunge right here. First time, you can just stay in this lunge with the hands on the ground. You can ease to your back knee. You can take your arms all the way up if you'd like. Good. Or you can interlace the fingers and just press the thigh away as you open up the front of your body. That's three, two, and one. Hands come down. Downward facing dog happens next. So take it back. Try not to drag that right foot. Pick it up mindfully and bring it back with you. Pull your gaze to your belly button for one breath of down dog. Open up the back of the neck. From downward facing dog, we slowly lower. After down dog comes camel pose. So you're going to rise up to the knees, support your waistline, or move your hands all the way around behind and support your lumbar and low back and lift your heart up. So moon salutes are a little bit different than sun salutation. Sun salutation appeals to the very kind of yang side of who we are, right? That heat, discipline. Sun salutes are very linear. They just go forward and backward on the mat. They don't really color outside the lines very much. The yin side of your body is the side that appeals to all that softness, smoothness, creativity. And so you see a lot more movement in a moon salute, right? From that child's pose, come down, stretch out your back, or uh, camel pose, pardon me, come down and find me in child's pose and stretch the spine long, let your forehead relax, take a little bow. Inhale, peek forward from child's pose and just slide like a little snake. You're going to slither out onto your belly. And extend your legs long behind you and move right into cobra. So think about the shape of a cobra, right? How just the upper part of that snake body is going to lift up. Everything else is still long on the ground behind you and then slowly release back down. From Cobra, everything is just gonna go in reverse order. So hands slide back and we hit the rewind button, up and back, all the way to your child's pose again. Stay right there for three, two, and one. Roll up, going in reverse order, we revisit that camel pose. And as time goes on, you can take this back bend deeper and deeper. You can reach all the way back for your heels or your calves if you want. But remember, we're going to move through this quite a few times here. And you get two camels in each rotation. So by the end, you'll have done this posture six times. Don't rush anything. Come out, land on your hands and knees. Tuck your toes, lift your hips. Look for your belly button and down dog. Take a deep breath out. Gaze forward. Left foot, remember, is our stepper. So left foot's gonna step up between the hands, and then you pick however you wanna lunge. Stay right here in this sort of forward, low lunge position. You can lift up, and again, you're gonna have the chance to make these lunges bigger eventually. So take your time, enjoy keeping things a little bit more grounded in this first round, center of gravity low. Give yourself a little less to think about so that you can pay more attention to what's going on in your body. Hands come back to the mat on your breath out. Look forward. Still going in reverse means we're going to step up, crouch and curl. Really low, forehead toward the knees, everything gets a squeeze. 
Push all of that exhale out of your belly. Nice compression pose here. And this crouching curl is particularly good for your digestive system, your elimination system, your metabolism. Lift your gaze. And press into your hands and feet. Lift your hips and forward fold. Okay, you're all the way through. And that seems like a lot, but once we get flowing, it'll move a little quicker. So let's take it through one breath, one movement now. We're gonna come all the way up. Arms reach overhead. Let's make sure you got a little space around you there. Big breath to the top. Hands to your heart center, exhale. Chandra Namaskara, again. Inhale, reach up. Find your left wrist with your right hand. Pull, stretch the left side of the body first. Hitting up that moon side, back through center. Tick tock the other way. Keep squeezing your inner thighs, lengthen through the ribs. Up the middle, maybe take a little baby back bend and exhale, fold. Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. This lengthen is really just to bring you up off your heels. On the exhale, squeeze, get low, press into your palms, round out your spine. Next breath in, lift the gaze. On the breath out, left foot steps back. Any lunge you want to make now, if you're feeling inspired to start taking it up a little higher, take it up a little higher. Anjaneyasana. And hands come down to the mat, back to down dog, use your core. Exhale completely when you get there. Drop to your knees. Big breath in as you roll up. Exhale as you push the hips forward. Lean into your back bend. Rise back up on a deep breath in. Drop your hips and exhale down into child's pose. Hands out front. Take a bow. Inhale right away. Slide to your belly. This is a big breath. It's going to bring you out and all the way into your cobra. Ujjangasana. Big exhale to push you all the way back. Balasana, child pose. Hips hit the heels for one breath and then roll right back up. So start to feel the movement like a little ripple or a wave through the spine, right? Less rigid, more fluid. Heart lifts up. Ushtrasana, camel pose. Exhale, land on the hands, tuck the toes. Abhuta, Shvanasana, downward facing dog, breathe out. Gaze forward, inhale, left foot steps through. Pause on the exhale, set your feet for your lunge. Rise on the next breath in as high up as you want to go. Any upper body variation is welcome here. It's, remember, it's a little creativity exercise, so don't be afraid to color outside the lines. Hands down, step forward, crouch on the breath out. Curl it all in nice and tight. Release that compression as your head lifts. Press into your hands and fold it all away. Come with me one more time and we're just gonna add a couple more fun bells and whistles on this final round. Arms up and over. Good, hands back to heart center. Always taking a moment to just pause between each salute. Notice the differences in your body, the shifts of energy, prana starting to move. Maybe a little space is cleared out in your mind, and let's do it one more time. Arms are going to come all the way up and over. Good. This time, instead of taking your wrist, take your elbow. Pull a little bit deeper there if that feels good. And if you still want more, Pick up your left foot and swing it all the way around behind and then really push those hips out to the side and stretch. Back through center. Everything moves the other way. Grab the right elbow, right foot can go behind. And if you like holding your wrist, you can stick with that, it's no problem. If your thighs are crossed, squeeze them together. Come back to the middle, right up through center. Take a big dive down, forward fold gets you all the way to the mat. Relax briefly, inhale. Lift a little bit, come off the heels. Exhale, crouch and curl, get low, squeeze in. Listen close, lift your gaze. Before you step back, one of two things. 
Maybe you want to take your hands up to your heart. Practice a little toe standing here. Bring your chest up. Lift your hips about an inch off your heels. Do some strengthening and stabilizing work. Or maybe you want to put your hands down. Lift your hips up. Rock your weight forward slightly and see if you can get your kneecaps right into your armpits. Elbows are going to slide into the shin bones to make a little shelf. Ooh. And then maybe, just maybe, one or both feet come up. Bakasana, Kavakasana, Crow Pose, or Crane, either one. Wherever you're at, one more breath, and then hands and feet come back down, and we step that left foot back together. High lunge, Anjaneyasana, bring it up. Good, let's sweep the hands, add on here. A little lean forward. And fire up that whole right side. Left hand is going to come down to the ground, and right arm's going to go up. We'll put a little twist in here as well. Big breath. Hold it for three, two, one. Both hands back to the mat. Downward facing dog. Here we go. Stretch back. Lengthen the backs of the legs. Relax the back of the neck. Drop to the knees. Inhale, Ushtrasana, up to camel. Now this is your last round, so start to make this a little bit deeper if you can. Maybe you want to reach for your heels, or maybe you want to do your camel with the arms up overhead. Just a free, unassisted camel stretch, kneeling back bend. Exhale, take it back down, sink to the ground, stretch into child. Shift your weight forward and slide to your belly. Inhale, roll the heart up, lift the chest. As big of a back bend as you want. A little bit deeper, walking your hands in. That's a king cobra, right? Lifting all the way up. And release. And hands and knees take you back to child's pose. Big breath out here. Up onto the knees. Last time. Here it is. As deep of a back bend as you want to make. You can try interlacing your fingers, pulling your knuckles down, reaching back for those heels, lifting your heart. Whatever is inspiring you, give it an extra bonus breath. Make sure your core is engaged as you release and land on your hands and knees. Tuck your toes back to downward facing dog. Inhale, step the uh, left foot forward, pardon me. Rise up. Once your feet are planted, come into that full lunge. Keep in mind, right, that Anjaneya, some of this posture is named for Anjane. She is the only female identifying deity that gets her own pose. All the rest of the yoga postures are really in some way, shape, or form masculine. So it's nice when you make that big lunge, right? To make it feel good. Hands sweep back, eventually you get low, you make this little twist. And again, keep it real soft and supple and open. Hands come down, this time you step forward. Feet side by side, drop the hips, crouch and curl, get low. You can stay there. That's option one. Option two, take a little toe stand, draw your hands to your heart. Make sure you lift your hips up off your heels so that you have to squeeze your inner thighs together and strengthen your quads. Or option three, hands down. Hips up in the air, knees go right into the armpits, and you lift the toes, the little arm balance work. Bakasana, Bakasana, crane or crow. Remember, cranes have straight legs. So if you're working toward crane pose, you're trying to shift till the arms are straight. Crow is this little one where the, where the elbows are bent and you're a little bit lower to the ground, right? Lift the hips up as you release from wherever you're at and exhale into your forward fold. This time we're gonna stay right there in that forward fold, open up the feet a little bit. And find your mudra fingers, first two and the thumb around the big toes, Parangushtasana. So circle around, connect your fingers to your toes and inhale, lengthen. Pull your chest up a little bit. 
long from the crown of your head to your tailbone. And then on the exhale, relax. Elbows bow out to the side. Gaze goes back through the legs. Slow everything down right here. back together one more time, half lift, and exhale, fold. We'll put just a quick little balance sequence in here as well. Let's take it into Utkatasana, so knees bend, arms come up, fierce pose. This is another one of those yoga postures that when it moved over to the west, everybody started nicknaming this posture chair, which is kind of a huge diss, right? Because this should not feel like sitting in a chair whatsoever. Ut means intense. Kata means fierce. So in Sanskrit, this posture means intensely fierce or ferocious. And that's what it should feel like, like a bolt of lightning through your body. Hips down, yeah, not sitting in a chair, not doing nothing. And instead, everything is alive. See if you can get your toes light enough that you can lift them, spread them out, set them back down, squeeze your inner thighs together more. If you can get your palms together without too much aggravation for your shoulders, pull the hands together. Really start to build that heat. Three. Keep squeezing. Two. Should feel intense by now. And one. Release. Swing the hands back and along with your hands, send your left leg into warrior three. Chest stays down, but there's a little lift in your heart. Right? Just a little up dog feeling across the collarbones. We'll breathe for three. Two, one, knees bend, swing back into Utkatasana, lower, deeper, even more ferocious than the first one. Hold and breathe, navel pulls tight to the spine. Four, three, two, one, hands go back, right foot swings behind. Standing on the left leg, warrior three. Breathe, little lift in the chest. Two, one, back in there one more time. Pull right through center, inhale, hold it for me here. Three, little lower. Two, drop the hands right out like you're reaching toward me. Come off those heels. Shoulders stay back over the hips, start to lower a little bit more, little bit more, little bit more. Don't touch your hips to your heels, stay right above it. Keep breathing. Two, and one. Now hands down, release into that forward fold. Let that tension out of your low back. Utkatasana requires a lot of strengthening work for the lumbar spine, and usually that's where we feel it the most. Once all of that has released, we'll take our only Half vinyasa of the practice right here, Ardha Uttanasana, lengthen again to that half flat back. Plant the palms, step, hop, walk, or float your feet back and down. Chaturanga, word Mukha, inhale, lift your heart, open up, and back to downward facing dog. On your exhale, all the breath out right here. Cross the mat here, anywhere from a 45 degree angle. Maybe if you're a really open hipped person, your shin is a little bit more parallel or 90 degree angle with the front of your mat. 
Take it down to the forearms, the elbows, the chest, the belly, however deep your body wants to go into this one. That left frontal hip bone here is pulling forward and down. So resist the urge to put all your weight over here on the right because it feels okay, but you're missing the whole other half of the pose, right? So we want to stay up on top. Flexors, pardon me, flexors on the left side, so those frontal hip bone muscles and tendons feeling a little bit longer, and then rotators on the right, these big booty muscles stretching out and opening up that wrap around the outside of the hip. So you get a little bit of both going at the same time, that's a good pigeon pose. And then slow your breathing down, we're not gonna be here forever, just for five. Four. Three, can you get a little bit more relaxed in the upper body? Can you make a little more space in your neck? Slowly lift your chest up. We're going to walk the hands in just a little bit. Now it's okay to put all your weight to the right. I'm going to ask you to actually sit down on that right side a little bit. We're going to swing this left leg around from the back. Bring it around the front and cross. Now if your knees just cross like this and that's about it, no problem. If this isn't even really working out too well, then you can switch into just a cross-legged pose with the left shin in front of the right. If this is okay, Try scooting your hips forward a little bit and just see if you can manage to coax that left heel a little closer. If you're a pretty open-hipped person, your legs are probably going to stack up pretty nicely for you here. You might have to lift your booty for a second, kind of move things around, sit back down. Feet are out to the sides, and cow face pose. So go Mukasana. Think about your knees kind of building the face or the head of the cow. And then your toes are out here like little cow ears. You know how cow ears are always kind of flipping out? Yep, so those are the ears of the pose. And if this is all you need, stay put and just breathe. If you want a little more, you can lean forward. Do your best to keep your sits bones rooted or at least close to the ground. And if you want to get your shoulders involved, Left arm comes up. You can touch the space between your shoulder blades. Just help with your right hand if that's plenty. Or right hand is going to come from below. So you're going to bend that elbow in the underneath position and try to get your fingers clasped or close to one another somewhere in between your shoulder blades. Usually I find that I've got enough happening in my hips to pay attention to, so the arms is really just a big distraction for me and it takes me out of the moment. But if you love the whole thing together, do it all. Otherwise, just pick one part of the pose to focus on and give it a few more deep exhales. Long Bhajjimadhanasana. Open up the hamstrings, release the spine. Roll back up and rock past your tailbone a little bit until your knees bend. And if you lean back any further, you'd have to compromise your spine. That's a good way of knowing that your core muscles are engaged and you're ready for boat. Pick up your feet a little or a lot. If you need to hold on, it's always okay. Breathe with me here for five. Little core strengthening, four, keep breathing. Don't stop just because the work is getting hard. That's when we need to breathe more, two, 
and one. Cross the ankles, tuck them through, plant your hands, and just step back to down dog. I know I said we were only gonna do one vinyasa. If you would like breaking the rules, hell, do a second one. Who cares, right? It's your practice, you do what's right for you. Get there however you get there, and then lift your left leg up high. Bend your knee for a moment. Press through flat palms. Try to soften your right heel closer to the mat and look under your left arm. Let that feel like a side body stretch. All the way down again into those hip flexors. And then straighten out and square off and swing through. Ekapadaraja Kaputasana. That's half pigeon or single legged king pigeon pose is the real translation there. Shift your shin slightly forward and then make sure you get back up on top. Right side, frontal hip bone, flexors. All of this is moving forward. Left side, trying to relax back. Deep rotators softening, getting down into those outer glutes, piriformis, TFL stretch in there as well. Of course, you're going to get a little IT band. Anytime you're in pigeon, there's going to be a hint of that here as well. And then relax whatever you can. Any place where you don't need to hang on, let go. back and find those full exhales, getting all the air out. Great big inhales, pass the lungs and down into the belly, slowly exhale again. One more time, breathe in. Exhale. Find the softest part of your pose right there. Good, and then bring it up. As you lift your chest, you're gonna sit that weight now onto the left, it's okay. Bring your heart up a little bit. Draw the back leg around, and remember, we're wrapping. If this is just ain't gonna go on today, no problem. Seated cross-legged pose and a little forward fold will give you a nice hip stretch too. If the right leg can come over a little bit, let's leave it there. If it can come over a lot, then try to cinch up your knees. I'll give you a little pro tip here. Come all the way up for a moment and really get your knees stacked. And then leave a little space between your heels and sit back down and now just try to maintain that shape. Good. Heart can stay up if you're doing the arms. Right one this time, elbow bends. Left one can be the helper or left one can be the hooker, <laughs> and come from below. <laughs> Breathe. So remember, it's not about how much you do, it's about how much you feel. It's about how much you breathe. So pick the movements, the variations, the modifications for the postures that really allow for more sensation to be dispersed through the body, right? And how do you do that? You do that with your breath. Sometimes if we're a little too deep in a posture, all we can concentrate on is a very acute sensation happening in one spot, right? That's all we can think about, and then our brain will try to do anything it can to get out of that situation. We want to start fidgeting, and we're not paying attention anymore, and we're thinking about every other thing. Take it down a notch. It doesn't have to be so intense. Life is intense enough already. Let your yoga practice feel good. And of course there are some times where we need intensity. We need a little push, we need a little fire, we need a little, um, you know, movement in, in order to find transition, in order for things to change, right? They, 
they need to push, but there are just as many opportunities for stillness and softness, and that's all part of the balance of a good, healthy yoga practice, a good, healthy body, life, right? It's all about that balance, which is so much easier said than done most of the time. Okay, wherever you're at, take your last breath out. Release, untangle your legs, give everything a little shake, grab and roll, loosen it all up. And I'm gonna do a little core work again, and this time it's just gonna get you right on down to your back. I'm gonna turn to the side, you stay right where you are. Hands out, legs are long this time, and we're just gonna roll, 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 roll. Good old fashioned Pilates style, rolling down. Do everything you can to not just flop onto the ground. Use every muscle you can to slowly lower, then take a full body stretch when you get to the bottom. Arms can come out, up and over. Good. As your hands relax back down, if you feel like you quickly want to squeeze your knees, or you want to take a little twist, or you want to make a happy baby, or a bridge, or anything else, go for it. Give yourself some time. I just like to have this practice done at 45 minutes so that people can get back to work. So if that's all you need today, please, please, please take even a few moments, if not a minute or so, to get into stillness at some point and just let your body receive the benefits of your practice. If you have more time, take five minutes. You will not regret it. Five minutes of Shavasana is like the equivalent of a little half an hour nap. So let your breath come back to its natural rhythm. Feel the weight of your body sink into your mat once again. Not holding back, not holding on, just a full surrender here. Stay right where you're at. Please don't move a muscle. I'm just going to take a moment to say thank you for hopping on. I'll keep doing uh, this little noon hour series on Monday and Wednesday as long as I have an audience for it. Um, if you are interested in coming in and doing some private lessons, send me a DM. I'm happy to have you here in the gorgeous studio and work with you one on one if that's um, a little bit better, and I am still enrolling just this week is your last chance. Um, I do have some opening for, for some small group classes if, if you're interested. Um, the most we do in the studio is eight, and I don't think uh, most of our classes are even full at a complete eight people yet. So there is room for you if you want in. Otherwise, stick with me here, um, and we'll be back to do stretching app on Saturday, live stream at one o'clock. So I'll see you then. Have a great Wednesday. Take care of yourself. Namaste.